So let me be clear, there is no spirit of Jezebel. You can hear something a lot over and over and over again. And just because you hear it often, just because it's told to you, just because it's taught that does not mean it's true. And that's the case when it comes to this whole issue, this whole notion of a spirit of Jezebel. Now, if you just go to YouTube, just click on YouTube and just type in spirit of Jezebel. Look what you come up with. You come up with a lot of different videos. And what you also want you to notice is notice people that are actually teaching and preaching about this spirit of Jezebel. In most cases, these are people who just their doctrine, their ability to teach is called into question. These aren't necessarily sound biblical teachers. And so they speak about this spirit of Jezebel. And the fact of the matter is there just is no such thing. If we're going to re rely on the Bible, the Bible tells us one, a couple of things. One, as Paul is saying in 1 Corinthians 4, 6, he says that I have figuratively applied myself to myself and Apollos for your sakes. Look what he says, so that in us you may learn not to exceed what is written. If you're going to say something about something and say it's in the Bible, well then, should it be in the Bible? If you're going to say there's a spirit of Jezebel, shouldn't we find a spirit of Jezebel in the Bible? The problem is we just don't find a spirit of Jezebel in the Bible. Now, where this comes from, obviously it comes from the person Jezebel who marries Ahab and Ahab is obviously a weak man, a weak king. He's given all these different opportunities by God, but he marries this woman. The kingdom has been split in half, the northern kingdom, and the southern kingdom. He marries Jezebel and she runs rap shot over him. She, uh, uh, she is more domineering than he is. And so the one thing you need to understand about Jezebel, how she acts is, She's not all that discreet. She is upfront. She's intentional. You know her actions. Now, is she manipulative and sometimes maybe not necessarily showing her hand? I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure that was the case as well. But she also let you knew where she stood. And that, if you want to say that that someone is like Jezebel, well, then makes you represent her, her wickedness fully and truthfully. She's not so, so cunning. Uh, and and hiding what she's doing. She's out in the open. What she does, one of the first things that she does that she marries after she marries Ahab is that she goes and she kills the prophets. So much so that the prophets have to be taken and hidden. We're looking at 1 Kings chapter 18 and you read all about Jezebel in 1 Kings and 2 Kings and you kind of see how she is and how wicked she is and obviously God kills her. But then we go to Revelation 2, 20 and then we hear Jesus making this statement to the church at Thyatira. He says, but I have this against you that you tolerate the woman Jezebel who calls herself. Now notice he says, who calls herself a prophetess and teaches and leads my bond servants astray. So they commit acts of immorality and eating things sacrificed to idols. Now, this particular Jezebel, uh, is this the same Jezebel as in the Old Testament? It doesn't say. As a matter of fact, notice what it says. It says this woman you could easily say the spirit of because the Bible does. We're going to look at what the Bible means when he uses sometimes this phrase, the spirit of something. But this particular Jezebel is Jesus referring to that same Jezebel or someone like Jezebel? Doesn't say, but he calls her a woman who calls herself a prophetess. Now, remember in the old covenant, I mean, the old Testament, Jezebel didn't call herself a prophet. So this is probably someone else. Jezebel was not an uncommon name at that time. Now today, obviously with the stigma that comes with the name Jezebel, it's not likely that you want to name your child Jezebel, even though more and more people are actually naming their child Jezebel. That's a whole nother problem. Talk about the degrading and the uh, just the, the downward spiral of our culture to want to name your child Jezebel, but another story. But there were people that were named Jezebel. It was, a, it was not an uncommon name. Now the name actually means uh, not esteemed or without honor. That's what her name means. Now, did it become to be that name? I don't know, but that's what the name means. And so this particular Jezebel in the Old Testament seems to be different from this Jezebel because the Jezebel in the Old Testament was one, not a prophet. She didn't call herself a prophetess that we know of. The scriptures don't say so. And also we're not told about her sexual promiscuity. Now, even though the guys that she would promote would have that, so, but to say that that was her, we don't know. The Bible doesn't say that that Jezebel, the King Ahab's wife, was a promiscuous woman. It doesn't say that. But this Jezebel in Revelation 2 is. Now, this whole notion about there being a spirit of Jezebel, the
the Bible just doesn't say. And if we're going to say it is, then shouldn't we show where the scripture says it also? If not, then it's an unbiblical statement to state that someone or something has a spirit of Jezebel. Now, where we get this whole idea of the spirit of something, what we need to understand is what, what's meant by when the Bible says the spirit of something. Now, it could actually refer to the spirit of that person. So when the Bible is saying that the spirit of this person was was sorrowful, something like that, well, then that's just speaking about the person's inward being. But then we have a spirit of, let's say, a particular description of the person. The person is, or, or say, a spirit of wisdom or a spirit of what have you. Well, does that mean that there's an actual spirit walking around? That there's an actual spirit that's called wisdom that is upon someone. And an example of this is Isaiah 11 too. The spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and strength, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. Well, is there a spirit of wisdom? Is there a spirit of uh, counsel? Is there and a spirit of strength? Is there a spirit of knowledge? Well, what this is, is an attitude of or it's like this person would have this. This person would, would be indwelt with these qualities. They have this as their persona, a wise person, a knowledgeable person. And so we say a spirit of. Is there an actual angel or demon or an actual spirit? No, that's the, it's, it's kind of an idiomatic way of saying so, this attitude. And so a spirit of is where we get that from. Then we'll see something like where a spirit of a particular person such as Elijah upon Elisha. Notice the sons of the prophets say, this is not God saying this, but the sons of the prophets speaking to Elijah said, the spirit of Elijah rests on Elisha. Is that to say that they are inaccurate? No. What it is to say, it's not like Elijah's actual spirit is upon Elisha because then where is Elijah's spirit then? Are we saying that Elijah exists no more and he's become one with Elisha? No, he's saying the power that was upon Elijah is now upon Elisha. God is now anointing and empowering Elisha in the same way they empowered Elijah. So if we're going to say that the spirit of something exists, like the spirit of Jezebel, or sometimes you'll hear the spirit of Python or the spirit of Leviathan, there are no such terms used in the Bible. There is no spirit of Python. There is no spirit of Leviathan. There is no spirit of Jezebel. And I understand what people might mean that they say you will see a woman who's acting a certain way and she is uh, a Jezebel. That's fine if you want to say a Jezebel or like Jezebel, anything like that. But the spirit of, if we're going to say so, especially people that are in a position where they have influence in their teaching, pastors and so forth, if you're going to say the spirit of, give the scripture where the spirit of is described. And we don't have that. And so guys, be careful about how we use words because we, we get a little bit loose sometimes. We want to make sure that we are governed by the scriptures. If we're not going to be governed by the scriptures, well, then we might as well go ahead and throw our Bible away, and then we can walk around with a spirit of ignorance.